hey if you're starting a customer experience journey or planning to implement a vsc program then you have come to the right place good morning everyone and welcome to the first episode of the experience talk in the last few years while working with growth stage companies we observed a few things they have created an awesome product they have are acquiring customers at lightning speed but they're struggling a lot in retaining them and the most common reason we figured out is they are not listening to voice of the customer data and so to aiming, aiming to help them we have started this series today and in the first few episodes we'll discuss about how you can create a voc program from ground zero and then take it up to cx maturity and after that in the later episodes we'll also speak with the cx professionals we have worked with and understand how they started their journey i am tanush jivan head of product here at service sensum and in conversation with my friend nand kishore tripathi aka nk the global head of customer experience and success at service sensum and let's jump right into it so nk before we start our first program about getting started with voc let's talk about a little bit about your customer experience journey how did you start your cx career nk thank you so much tanuj uh, and good morning everyone uh, like i have started my career as a data analyst you know looking at bunch and you know huge pile of data that coming from the customers feedback on multiple surveys you know if you remember like you know uh, six to seven years back the question surveys were like you know almost 40 page questions you know and that's right. 60 page questions 20 <laughs> page questions like you know lots and lots of data right so i've been working uh, to help customers to understand you know what exactly those data means for them and analyzing them and then moved our uh, moved my career to the customer support team and then where i realized that like you know hey you know how does it feel when when a customer is happy you know you see happy faces and then you see reactions you fell in love with them so that yeah, is where i got my passion created about the customers and then i switched the gear in my career where you know i worked with the implementations and worked with more than 200 customer experience implementations for their cx journey for the small medium and enterprise customers and i don't know when i become an evangelist to make sure that uh, <clears throat> my my goal has been changed so my life okay. goal has been changed to create uh, and help the brands to make a better world tomorrow and i always want to see myself as a customer to get a great experience and as same wise the rest of the world as well tanuj so, so the way you want to uh, get your experience from any other company and you want to provide uh, better experiences than that like uh, what i'm trying to say here is you for our customers i think we love live for the customers right being the head of product this is like the most common thing for me that what my customers are saying and what they are expecting right and Absolutely. that makes me happy and one thing nk i i had a curiosity and i was also talking on linkedin about this uh, post in a couple of days back that if you want to get into customer shoes customer support is something that you uh, or or maybe you have started with is, is that a common uh, sense that i like i have a 7 years experience in customer support and you have been there in customer support for 16 years and that makes us more closer to the customers and love our customers more is this something uh, like happen, happens with you and your friends uh, who work in customer support that they try to jump into customer experience or is it like anyone can come into customer experience see i think i would say it's more of uh, like the feeling you know because we are dealing with experience and it's it's it comes with a feeling right and i think uh, customer support team are very very close to to the customer and they have, they know that what is the pain that is you know giving to them right. and and if the team has the empathy right so uh, it would be like kind of uh, giving you know the way uh, your whatever you could do basically whatever i can do for my customer i would do it right. that's 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 the feeling that i have whatever it takes i want to make sure that you your query get resolved uh and you should be happy with when you're talking to me and when you're talking to me you don't have to talk to anyone else because i'm the person who will help to make sure that you you get your answers right, right. so we need people to have that uh, passion you know even if in the if you're in a customer support but if you have a passion about it to to deliver and happiness to your customer then i think you are the right fit for 
being into the customer experience field right. that is but but the customer experience is more broader right is more broader yeah absolutely it's absolutely it, it, it's, it, it starts just, with support it starts with support so but it's not just about customer support it's about like everywhere your product your services your support your marketing your messaging everything revolves around customer experience yeah. <laughs> it's a sea of experience <laughs> yeah right. it definitely is right yeah. so uh, so let's jump into our uh, first question uh, today nk i i'll have a few questions for you and uh, which will related to the voice of the customer program that helps our audi- audience uh, so uh, our first question is like actually b- very basic one what is voice of the customer great question so it's very basic question uh, but very important so right. i would say that uh, listening the feedback uh, from the customers and understanding their expectations is basically summarize the voice of customer so so basically two two elements listening their feedback and right. what is their expectation with you with your services and with your product gives you the insight of voice of customer but it can have a broader broader uh, you know understanding when you uh, engage this with the business right Okay. so when when we connect this with the business then it has a broader uh, understanding on the voice of customer where uh, your metrics uh, that lets your business outcome right you know your revenue your churn and all of that that also been added to the voice of customer but to start with it's the very basic very simple feedback of customer and the expectation of the customer from your services and the product okay awesome nk and so uh, it gets talk, talks talked about a lot like the we call voc voice of the customer and then we also talk about a customer experience program or voice of the customer experience program how would you differentiate between these two are they it seems very similar to me okay um it's very good question again i think uh, the cx custom like cx program basically if you talk about the cx program cx program is again i think it's a broader umbrella right and and the voice of customer is just is one it's a heart of it basically okay. if you will say that it's a heart of your cx program so if you are creating a cx program uh it's it's heart right so it must have a voc program it could be a small in size and big in size depending upon what is the maturity of your uh, program is right okay and it is coupled like it is the voc program is coupled with your cx program and i think cx program i would talk about is basically consist of uh, uh business led metrics right uh, revenue churn rate uh, new customer acquisitions that you want to know that that business okay. team want to get to know customer and acquisition VOC, cost if i yes, would add yes absolutely, right? absolutely, yeah. absolutely absolutely and voc is mostly uh, connected with the customer metrics like hey you know are my customers are happy you know uh, and then what is my overall nps score are are the people are able to recommend are we able to uh, make an equity on that right are are my customers are loyal enough uh, and uh, how many happy customers are rating you on a social media how how your ratings are going on there it's more of understanding on the social impact uh, that goes on the voc mm-hmm. and uh, the cx program when we enrich this that becomes like your overall combination of your customer metric plus business metric tanuj okay so so voice of the customer will talk about uh, mostly about customer centric metrics and uh, the cx program combines that customer centric metrics with the business metrics as well right absolutely yes so so voice of the customer like you rightly said is kind of like a heart of your cx program in your cx journey right so yes. and you cannot have a cx program without a voc in place Uh, yeah you can imagine uh, like a zombie or something <laughs> a zombie of cx program <laughs> right okay and and if we talk about like a company like a b2c uh, and so b2c or maybe b2b as well but let's talk about b2c first how do we capture this voice of the customer data nk yeah absolutely i think for the 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 b2c is depending upon or like i think rather b2b also or b2c mm-hmm. there is slight difference only in terms of how we are capturing data right b2b is like some of the lesser means of the channel of sources how they interact with you as compared right. to b2c it opens a wide sea 
of the channel areas where can customer reach out to you so right. be it like you know app reviews they want to you know want to share their feedback or like uh, they're contacting your contact center and then sharing their feedback or expectation what they need right uh, it could be your uh, you know if you have stored they can go there and then share that feedback or maybe you know uh, if you are having a touch point service or collecting any feedback to them like generally i have seen like b2c is the post transactions feedback whether they are able to do it or not okay. now these days in digital era there is like much more wider uh, wider aspect of it how right. a customer can reach out to the brand and mm-hmm. similarly brands are also expanding their horizon to make sure that their outreach is to more of the more more to more customers right right so we really need to understand what are the key areas that where we are trying to make sure that our customer will interact with us and then all right. those expect at omni channel we need to have a have a mechanism to to collect the feedback and not only collect the feedback and also we have to take action on that right so you so voice of the customer if i talk about it's like people so we 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 use uber right and uh, we give the survey after we finish a ride right that's one place of giving the feedback the second is i have also rated uber on play store right that is also another way of uh, sending a feedback and like sometimes we if we have a complaint or we we are really delighted we share our messages through social media as well right on twitter on facebook and i'm i'm not i'm more of a linkedin person but yeah linkedin and instagram i've seen people uh, complaining or uh, like kind of asking for support from these uh, Uh, social media channels of companies right so all of this data you would say is voice of the customer data right absolutely yes because see i think like you like you mentioned that uh, you you rated uber on the like you know just on the app itself right and then again you went back and also rated on the uh, app store also right right because you try to uh, provide your experience or you want your voice to be heard right right so basically now these days customers if if they really really happy if they're super happy right then they right. will go beyond and try to you know uh, talk about you over linkedin or app reviews everywhere or right. at the same time even if they are not happy also right then they will also right. try to see what are the sources where their voices can be heard to the larger audience and then can make an impact and they will try okay. to reach out those sources as a as a brand we have to make sure that we are listening to uh, all the sources where right. customers have an access to reach out to you right? right so yeah i think these all will be a source of a data and that that needs to go into your voice of customer program that you can listen and act upon uh, okay answer. and and k uh, so so there are two questions that are coming from this conversation now uh, the first question i have is if there are so many like let, let's we were taking about uber as a company right and there are so many sources where people are uh, want to get their voices heard right they are rating on app store social media and everywhere how does a uber as a company respond to each of this data um <laughs> <laughs> so uh, i'm just i i think like i'm just thinking like you know how uh, like you don't have like in you know, a 100 hands or you know the you know um, and how much manpower does it require to do it right, right? so that is where i think like see uh, the uh, the ai technologies comes into the picture and tools uh, where it can consolidate all the responses so being i have like led implementations for such uh, such a large enterprises where data sources are coming from like seven channels eight channels Right. some of them is like you know just through a social media list so people are also using social media listener tools listening right. tools these days uh but what type of anal- uh, like you know uh, uh the analysis is getting that 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 is most important and what kind of insights are we able to get out of that right right so so there is there is a tool who uh, like voice of customer program for us like conversation analytics is also a great tool where right. uh, uh, we can connect with any sources be it coming from your crm data salesforce right. or like be it coming from your email conversations even if you are now these days uh, in regionals where whatsapp penetrations are very very high Absolutely. Uh, whatsapp conversations have been tracked up to to understand the customer sentiments uh, your like contact center when the person is calling to you to understand uh, how the uh, sentiment of the customers are right. all this goes and sits into one single dashboard uh, in our conversation analytics 
and that really helps the cust uh, the basically the uh, client success team and the contact center team and the product team so it's not like just one team that who is actually digesting the data and the analysis from uh, from the source of it basically it helps the team to understand hey you know is this person has contacted me right just you know a minute back on the app right. store right but now again he is sending an email conversation and the person who is you know lifting up the call he knows and he can see the the past conversation with the customer and now you think like right. if you know that this customer's behavior from the past you would be able to take actions appropriately and able to connect with them as such mm -hmm. with whether they are happy not so happy right. so you can empathize uh, with the customer as required to make to make make it more uh, you know uh, easy right. for them yeah right so using all this data at one channel is one thing and use it you know, so for for a company which has like around millions of conversations going on or even thousands right you would need some kind of tools to act on it because you will not be actually able to reply to each single person right in a b2b segment maybe you will be able to reply to a single person but not in b2c that's too difficult b2b is more of a relationship so man to man relationship right. is much more required and i don't see like even in b2c uh, we need to have a relationship but uh, doing this on the magnitude is really uh, where we need a technology in place right. and i think if i have to summarize this uh, like this entire thing a single source of truth you should have what your customers are talking across all the channels that you have given them to talk about yeah all right and and also the other question that i came in and it was because of the covid thing right uh, covid happened and it was very unfortunate for most of the people and uh, like if, as everyone was working from home and most of the contact centers have avaya cisco ip phones using them right and once they uh, went to home they could not take their instruments with it, with them right so they had so the customers once they, they started contacting companies who were Uh, only available on the phones and not digitally on chatbots and all uh, they they faced some trouble reaching out to people and they started use reaching out to people on social media the companies on social media rather than because they were not available on the phones right while everyone was working from home so uh, once this stopped the phone call how do you think a company could have handled this better because if they are not able to do it on the phone calls will those same agents who were who are actually working from home can take over the chatbots or social media conversations i think you have picked up a very hot topic uh, and i think this is uh, during during the covid situation this was really really a challenge uh, right. for uh, for the brands and um, i think are evolving right and right. even like right now these days if you see the way we are taking actions uh like people are still not able to get to office to manage their program or take the calls basically Absolutely. contact center if you talk about right so right right the volume has also gone increased up because people are like you know not getting their deliveries on time they don't uh, know where the transaction has not been completed you know a lot of queries going on around that right. so they started like pushing their feedback on the social media so enabling so i would say that taking Uh, looking at the situation in a way that how we can uh, like look at in the positive way right so in this situation right. it was an opportunity for the agents to upscale and train them out on the other technologies that can lead them to uh, have a better conversation on the social channels as well right so but obviously it does it doesn't come uh, easy way it requires uh, like the budget for that and there are a lot of constraint was that like you know how much budget and what is the roi of that so that is a separate discussion we can do it <laughs> we will uh, do it. on that but uh, like really uh, in a sense of it like it's more of like the use of technology and that is why we say that the brands has gone like 40% advanced in the digitization the last 6 month that they have right. compared to do it in the next 5 years right kind of so so but covid made them do it right not covid every brand was, was ready. a catalyst i would say covid was a catalyst to make them to to do this uh, however some of the brands have already uh, like plan to do it but right. covid act as what as a catalyst and i think like uh, it's a sad truth but like there are a lot of organization that they were right. not able to cope up with this and they disappeared um, uh, during this uh, uh, situation right most of them like uh, we can also see the the era of acquisitions uh, happened you know the brands tried to 
uh, keep up their existence and then try to you know uh, merge with the, the bigger brands and stuff like that that is also right. had happened uh, uh, during the situation tanuj yeah right and i've seen see a, a few of the companies so uh, even though people say that the chatbots are not effective because the the ai is not that good it it misses the human touch hey but i uh, i figure out like i'll give an example like i uh, use hubspot a lot right so whenever i try to reach uh, them on support channel even during this times at covid uh, they are always available like monday to friday if i if i text them on on chat and they don't have a uh, way to give give them a phone call right i cannot give them a phone call but as i am a digital guy and most of the people have moved digitally as well so uh, having a chatbot even before covid i think helped companies like this right that they didn't actually have to use a phone uh, to uh, an ip phone to answer people queries right so that's just an example and i have seen many companies do it even b2c companies have now chatbots available uh, with them right so that yeah yeah you try to search for like how many chatbot companies has been like you know new chatbot companies has came into the market so right. you will try to see that how chatbots are going to be a lifeline uh, you know in in coming days so yeah. i think the vision uh, of those companies has really helped because they they knew that not now uh, because but in the future that's the need of the hour right. and that really helped them to sustain uh, in the situation now right. and then chatbot is then another uh, i would say a source for voice of the customer right uh, cuz i've seen uh, like okay I'll, now if we are talking about voice of the customer and we are talking about chatbots so there are loads of con- meaningful conversations happening on the chatbots even when we work uh, and uh, i'm sure you must have seen so many ch- conversations with our customers going on on the chatbot and it has helped me a lot in uh, creating uh, if i say shape my product roadmap it has helped me a lot yeah and i think that if you is- listen to customer it is always going to help you beat on a service <laughs> beat on a product always so make sure that you are listening to the customer right so uh because like they are the one who's going to actually use it or he they are the one that who is actually you know digesting this and uh, on a day to day and i have right. seen like you know that um, the customer knows more than what you would know as a product <laughs> product <laughs> right <laughs> so they can give you oh we can do this you know oh really so sometimes yeah. it, it uh, like you know we get a gesture of that oh wow I means like because you are just building a car right but they can do a drift by the car that you have never thought of it uh, absolutely i think that that makes total sense i would say we'll have to guide them as yep. uh, product guys right uh, that what they are we we just have to listen and understand what they need and somehow try to give them in the product that's what we try to do right absolutely yeah. and uh, nk like if uh, going into this conversation i have uh, one last thing that i would like to ask you uh what are the top 3 reasons you would recommend to any business in the growth stage that they need to listen to the voice of the customer what are the top 3 reasons you would say i means i could list out 100 reasons but you have asked me top 3 yeah um so i think the first trend for the most important one is to understand what is working and what is not working because for any initiative we really need to know that you know what exactly is working and not working and what is happening at the ground zero we really need to be aware of being in the client right. success or being in a product uh, head we really need to understand hey you know really what is happening at the, at the ground zero that's one right. thing right right second um is are we delivering our promises as a brand what we have envisioned that these are the values our brand should be promising are we really delivering on those brand promises how we right. do we track this if you don't right. have a program to listen and understand this, this is really important and i think the third uh would be is about you know retaining your customer right but right. obviously like you know that's the one thing that you would need for your existence right so retaining your customer uh, getting insight uh, what exactly they need uh, your future advancement uh, right so i say these are the top 3 uh, tanuj so was working not working deliver right. your brand promise and uh, get insights for your future advancement right i think it it also helps in the sense that once we launch something new and if we are listening to the voice of the customer we'll get initial feedback like really quickly right if we have launched something and we are listening to that we'll we'll get initial response and we then we can iterate and improve right that's how we improve our product once we listen to them and having a voc program just helps us in quickly doing that right 
rather than waiting for like in previous days like you mentioned uh, there were 40 60 question surveys and then you analyze that data and then you make sense of it right and but nowadays it's just a chatbot conversations a social media review and anything like that can simply give you an honest feedback that you would have in the past needed 40 questions to get that answers right absolutely absolutely so yeah i think like that things are getting very fast and the right. people are getting impatient like Danuch, you know <laughs> so they need uh, anything in the blink of eyes right or like if you ask like okay. when do you need this they will say yesterday right so yeah. right. it's it's already on the top of it so in this era like uh, uh, in the moment uh, experience is really important so right. whenever we def whenever you're designing your voc program uh, just make sure that like you know we are able to deliver the in the moment experience at 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 what level is possible right that is right. what is the key factor uh, otherwise like the voc program is really will help you on a global like you know in in, in the other areas of it but right the if i talk about the health of your voc program i would i would just measure, measure this that uh, on the voc program is this insightful actionable and is it providing the in the moment experience to your customer okay that's really nice so three things that we have to keep in mind yeah i gave you three golden <laughs> bus takeaways okay and uh, nk for any company who is uh, who's in the growth stage uh, when would you say is the right time to start a voc program uh, yeah absolutely i think see as soon as you uh, get connected with your first customer right. so you, when you understand this is my first customer we want to get started with i think uh, like voc program is not something that requires a huge technology a number of man sources and whatnot right Right. So basically, what VOC customer, like I said, expectation and the feedback of the customer. That is actually a slight version of it, right? So right. whenever you have your first customer, I think like you should start thinking about like uh, how we can understand what the customer feeling. And just asking question, hey, uh, were we able to help you with this? Is it helping you, right? Just asking one a question or two question is really help to get into the into their shoes. So right. I think. Immediately, whenever you have in uh, interaction with your first customer, you should think about your your VOC program, Tanaj. All right. So even even if we are just starting out, so the voice of the customer program for a starting out person would be just getting on that phone call and asking them uh, how they they are able to use our product or services and what kind of things that we are able to solve for them and what are the things that they look in the future, right? That's that's what we do as as the product guys, right? So it's, it's something that starts with uh, once you're starting a company, you have your first customer, it starts with the product people or the very few people or founders that we have in the company, right? So it should start from there. Our customers, like our, generally, like I've seen like in this, the growth stage companies, like our first customers are like friends, families, relationship, right. and you know, the persons who we, we, you know, they trust on us and they, they are, the, they want to like part of our success. Right. And uh, so, so basically the feedback coming from them, we can reach out to them personally and understand, Hey, you know, how is helping. And just, we just want to make sure that we keep that era when the new customers are onboarding, we should follow the same pattern unless like, you know, we built in our completely holistic uh, uh, program for VOC. Awesome. NK. I think, uh, is, is there anything else you would like to share today? NK? If you ask me to talk about, I can ask, like, maybe uh, you can continuously, you know, maybe like maybe another four or five months continuously we can talk on this podcast <laughs> so i think we'll we'll take that up in the next episode then nk so sure uh, thank you so much nk for coming on the call today and thank you for all the listeners uh, that is all for today and our next podcast we are going to talk about how a brand will prepare to initiate a voc program and what are the best practices of implementing a voc program all right i'm i'm, I'm happy to share my uh, magic beans that I have planted you know, over 200 <laughs> CX implementations in, in following the podcast. So guys, be tuned in and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll see more uh, things to understand how it really helped to create programs and then what mistakes, what mistakes we have already been done so we can learn right. from them and the best practices that we will allow. We will oh, use that. Awesome, man. Okay. And uh, for all the listeners, don't forget to subscribe to our channel to be a part of this community and do share it in your groups. And if you would like to add, comment or recommend something, you're most welcome. Just write to me at tanuj at serviceinsome.com or nk at serviceinsome.com. So guys, see you next week.
All Bye-bye. right. Thank you guys. Have a good day. Bye. Bye, Tanuj. Yeah.